unction of the Holy Spirit that you have given us who will lead us, guide us in all the truth so we can discern which spirit is talking to us. Touch our ears to hear. Here we are, speak spirit of the Lord. Grace to receive. Grace to discern, grace to obey in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. So what we have been talking, first of all, when you or anybody else says something and the Lord said, number one, you must challenge it. You must test it. And if they say, it is God, you don't have to test. Uh, that's a number one sign. It was not God, it was them. Then I say, it must agree with the word of God. Because God will not contradict himself. I gave you several examples last week. Huh? If say somebody says something which is not in the book, no. No. Then we made another statement last week. Does this make me more like Jesus? Am I a better man? Am I a better father, better husband, better disciple of Jesus? Or the one who is giving me word, he just got his agenda. It was in, very interesting. I was not even near the last chair and one of my child just laughing. I said, God, what's wrong with you? So she told me, listen to this. He said, Pastor, just recently I went to one uh, woman's meeting, revival, and there was some prophetess from Alabama or something. My child here in this church was sitting in a church lifting her hands together. So this prophetess came and put her business card between her fingers and said, the Lord said, right now, write me a check for a thousand dollar and behind the card is my PO box. The Lord said, now onward, you supposed to send me your tithes and offering at this address. So you know I've been around the block uh, more than one time. And she was so appreciative for me breaking it down. All I am doing, I'm a shepherd. My job is to warn you from the whoops, warn you from the whoop who come in a sheep's clothing. Paul says in uh, Acts 20, he says, after my departure, they will come from within. Not sparing the flock with their own agendas. So please listen to me. I have no agenda but only one to obey God, to do my job as a shepherd, to provide for you, to protect you, to guide. That's all my job and to take you to heaven when everything is said and done. That's my job. I'm not trying to please you. I'm not after your money. I'm not a nerve of them. You will never say me, I need $1,000, 10 people stand up and give me $100. You better go on. Because I, all I will get is a is $1,000. But if I say, everybody who love me, give me, hey. So don't, don't think I was born yesterday. Say, it is my money. He is my God. He will talk to me about my money. As a matter of fact, he already had talked to you about your money. Give 10%. Give from your heart. Huh? Give charity. That's the end of that. And the scripture they always use is from First Corinthians, I mean, First King, uh, 17 chapter, and the Lord sent Elijah to the widow woman, but they never tell you. The Lord already had commanded that widow woman. So if God hasn't commanded you, I don't care how many business cards they put in your hand. So that's what. Now today, filet mignon time. You are ready. Now. This one. Buckle up. Reason number three, why we need to taste. Does my church family does the church authority, does the church elders, does the church leaders agree 
and confirm what I am saying. So before we go anywhere else, let me see this. You need to go home and read Romans 13, verses 1 through 7. Romans 13, 1 through 7, Bible say, every authority, every, including the police, is ordained of God. And if you do it right, you don't have to step on your brake anytime you see him. You don't have to have a fuzz buster on your desk. You don't have to blink your light to let the other one know uh, there's a trap out there. He said, every authority is put there by God. And like I said Sunday, you don't know how happy I was Sunday. I have no idea what happened to me. Once in a while, God will let me get in that prophetic zone, and I'm very graceful. Not that I'm so special, but I'm hungry for God to use me for his kingdom. Amen. So in connection, it is not democrat. It's not Republican. It is heaven that rules. It is God who takes one down and puts someone else. So don't say, uh, God will do what God will do. But you go pray and vote. If you didn't vote, don't complain. And even if you voted and your man or your woman doesn't get in, that doesn't mean you going to fuss and complain the rest of your life. I hate people when say, Obama, uh, would you call me Stephen and I'll knock you out. Whether you like it or not, he's still a president. Nobody's going to do everything which you want. And like I told you Sunday, Sometime God will use their mouth to speak what heaven wants to speak, just like Balaam. He wanted to curse people, and he opened his mouth, and blessings started coming. So we are right now on a God's timetable. Doesn't matter who gets inside. God is running the show. Every authority. He said, we must be under subjection to every authority. But let me tell you something. We are living in an age of rebelliousness. Paul says in 1 Timothy, in the last days, people will be disobedient, ungrateful. This is the most ungrateful generation I have seen they have this entitlement. I had it coming. Give them something. They look at you. Is that all you're going to get? Never say thank you to mama, daddy. I had it coming. School starts. So I got to have a Jordan. And you come with the C's and D's. You don't need no Jordan. I post someone is coming. There's nothing wrong with your four and five and six. All they will do is just glorify something which you don't even use. Entitlement. And guess what? Government helps them. You work hard all day long and you ain't got no life insurance. And everybody got a life insurance. You can't even qualify because you make... <laughs> Somebody work all their life. Some of people are milking the system. Oh, my leg hurt. And they can drive from here to Hawaii. <laughs> Go figure that. <laughs> my back hurts. And paint the house and climb on the roof with all this. All the, no wonder the, 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 the insurance is spying on your butt. Wow. 
and the regular law-abiding people, rain or sleet or shine, they go to work and you ain't got nothing. Got more babies? We're going to raise your deductible. Five babies in the, every January is their Christmas. I'm going to get away from all this. I'm going to get in trouble. That Christmas don't come in December. That Christmas come in January. And they make it easy, electronic. Whoa, there you go. Back in the days, we used to wait six weeks and two months. And be feeding that demon. Every authority. Is it the policeman carrying a sword? Well, they don't carry a sword, they carry a weapon. Huh? But he said, those who are righteous, they don't have to worry about it. I don't care who carries what. But you're doing something dumb. I'm not running for president. So if natural authority is laid by God, what about the house of God? House of God, Ephesians says, 411, and Jesus had sat in a church. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastors, and teacher. Jesus said it. Dickens don't say it. I know some churches have Dickens and they got a selection committee. Some of them ain't even born again. If the Holy Ghost was to come and sit with a red suit with a red tail in it, they wouldn't know that was the Holy Ghost. Not born again, people are going to decide who is going to be the one preacher. All right. They started all the way with Lucifer. Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28. He wasn't happy to be the archangel. I'm not satisfied. So he led a rebelliousness. A rebellious people have a posse. Took the one third of angels with him. Same demon in a church. They go to some silly women and some ignorant fools. And tell them, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Don't go in a step number one. Does it agree with the word of God? You don't even care. You don't even know what it says. Does it make you a better man or not? No, you don't want to do it, but news flash. First Corinthians 16, 16. Ephesians 5, 21. First Peter 5 and 5. First Peter 5 and 5 is Paul. I mean, Peter says in the beginning, I am your elder. I am the one God put me here as a shepherd. Then he say, First Peter 5 and 5, he say, You submit. And the folk in the church, ain't nobody going to tell me nothing. That's why you is a fool and ain't nobody like an old fool. There ain't nobody going to tell me nothing, including pastor. Uh, is you born again? Is you a sheep or is you a goat? God always. But you would be surprised some of their goats are here in this church. No matter what I say, what anybody else says. One guy looked at me and told me, I don't care what you all say. I'm going to do what the hell I want to do. One guy walked in my office and told me, you draw the line, I'm going to cross it. So from that day up till now, I have left the fool alone.
You know I am saved. To come in my office and tell me that. I used to have a, no, they're putting on a YouTube. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Do you hear me what I'm saying? Hebrews 13 and 17. He said, the one who is watching over your soul, you submit and you obey. If you don't submit and if you don't obey me. You are a goat. You are a rebellious son of the devil. Oh God, Lord Almighty, did I say that? Don't ask me. Peter told, Paul told that you are a son of the devil. That's why John the Baptist said, you bunch of snakes and vipers. Why are you coming to church if you're not going to believe what we teach? Like I have said, when I open the book and I read it to you, any man, any woman opens the book and reads to you and you say, I ain't going to do it. Is you saved? First John 1, it is about relationship with God. He said, let me tell you something. I am writing because God wants a family relationship. Listen to me. First John 1 says that you cannot have a relationship with God the Father if you don't obey what we're telling you from the word of God. Meaning, you cannot have fellowship with God when you have no fellowship with me. I don't need you. I can stay home and worship God by myself. You cannot have fellowship with God and have no pastor. You cannot have a fellowship with God and have no elder. You cannot have fellowship with God and you have nobody to guide you, to tell you. Sheep are dumb. I'm talking the paraphrase. I'm not calling you dumb, but I'm talking about Psalm 23. Sheep don't know where the water is. Sheep don't know where the green pasture is. That's why they follow the shepherd. Shepherd know where the water is. Shepherd know where the green grass is. Who is going to lead you to water? Who is going to lead you to green pasture? I'm at home. Who is discipling you? Jesus said, go and make disciples. You is a fool if you stay home and say, I don't need a pastor. I don't need a church. Is you even saved? You may be smarter than me. You might not know more scripture than me. You might have more revelation than me. But know this. You don't hold office of a pastor. If you are that smart, why God had to go all the way to India to bring me here? People are after me for 20 some years to kick me out, to knock me out. We have gone through hell and high water emotionally, financially, physically. I'm still standing. And, and you think you know more than I do. You might. But God honors the office. I showed you that Sunday. John 11, the high priest. A Sadducees sold out to Romans. A puppet. But God used because of his office. Pastor, are you mad at them? I'm not mad at them. I feel sorry for them. That's why you come up with these stupid, ignorant teachings. 
That's why he wrote First John. Because people believe all flesh is bad, all good is spirit. So Jesus was a spirit. He never did come in a flesh. That's why he wrote First John. And you sit there and watch TV, and somebody say you don't have to repent. And you buy, you, 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 you buy that bull and then you keep on living in the scene and nobody checks you. You'll be amazed how many people come here Sunday and, and then they hate my gut. One guy told me, little man, I can't stand you. I said, no, sir, you cannot stand the word of God. That's your problem. It's not me. It's the word. Yes, yes. Paul said, if you receive me, oh, forget Paul. Jesus said, I came here to show you the father. If you receive me, you receive the father. Don't say you go to the father direct without going through me. Now, first John said, don't tell me you're going to him and you have no relationship with me. You don't submit to me. How are you, going to, how are you not going to submit to me whom you see? You don't see him and say, oh, I'm going to submit to God. Is you a fool or is you a fool? You're going to hear this thing on the TV. Pastor, that's the reason nobody wants to come to your church. Good. Gideon had 32,000. 22 had no clue. You're going to go home good. He gone. And the Lord said, boy, it is still too many, 10,000. And nowadays, we judge anointing by numbers. How many are you running? Honey, I ain't running. I'm leading. I'm not in a cattle business. I'm a shepherd. Abel was a shepherd. God has used all the shepherds all their life. Abel was a shepherd. Moses was a shepherd. David was a shepherd. Jesus was a shepherd. My grandfather was a shepherd. My father was a shepherd. I'm a shepherd. My son will be a shepherd. What you all going to do with the shepherds? But obey. Jesus said, if you receive me, you receive the father. He has seen me, he has seen the Father. So Paul comes here and says, I'm writing this thing to you. If you receive it, fine. If you don't, you are rejecting the one who sent me. That's why we're preaching the word of God. Follow me as I follow the Lord. 1 Corinthians 11, 1. 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Philippians 3 and 17. Philippians 3, 17. Submit to the authority. And that's the reason Bible says, do, do you understand Bible says, don't put, I don't even know how to say in English, I know novice, I said, don't put a young fool up there. That, that's all it means. Because his head is going to get big. I see so many, huh? Uh, uh, he, he was a thug on the street. And now he's saved and he's a bishop. Uh, don't look at me. Don't write me nothing. Don't write me nothing because I don't answer no question dumb like that. Who disciple you? Who disciple you? Who help you renew your mind? You steal a thug. Just you buy a five thousand dollars for a rope. Don't make you a bishop. I say this because I've been there for 40 
two years through hell and high water. I sometimes I tell God, I thank you. I am standing in the grace of God. I am that I am by the grace of God. Many would like to take me out. If it had not been for God on my side, this church would not have been here. It would have been folded. But I'm here to tell you, you didn't choose me. I didn't choose me. God, before the foundation of the world, chose me and ordained me as a prophet into the nation and put his word in my mouth and say, you will go where I sent you. You will say what I say you. You should not be afraid of the faces of people. That's the one thing. I don't give a rip. Oh, Lord, yes. Sometimes some of my people who were around me in the beginning, they didn't know how to handle it. But I said, now go easy. For what? People dying, going to hell because of the lies. And I'm going to take it easy. If I see a lion, I'm going to knock him out. If I see a bear, I'm going to knock him out. If a giant comes, I'm going to knock him out. You know why? I'm a pastor. I'm a shepherd. Care for you. Care for your wife. Care for your children. Care for your grandchildren. That's what a shepherd is. There ain't no hustle in this house. Don't play with you. Don't play with your money. Don't play with your soul. Pastor, elder, qualification. Listen to me. Godly counsel. Did you hear me? A godly counsel. The one who is mature. Not the one who say she is mature and he is mature. You will never hear me say I'm mature. Give me the ball and I make a touchdown. That will show it to you. They don't even know how to handle the ball. And they're mature. Oh, I'm mature. I can't handle it. You better go on. Mature people never say they are mature. They keep on doing what they do. Truth. Can't handle it. That's what I say. Mature, wise man or woman of God. Listen to this. There should be some qualification of who speaks in your life. Amen. You never ask for a qualification. You go to a meeting and they move in the Holy Ghost, whatever. And you get in the spur of the moment, you get caught up. Emotionally, they will play with your soul. They will play with your emotion and got what you want. They want and they're gone. You can't call them. That's an 800 number. They will have a recorded prayer for you. And those who say that, that, that uh, every prayer request we come, we read it. Is you a fool or is you a fool? Huh? You're going to read 3,000, 4,000 prayer requests every day uh, when you have a time to wait on God or with your wife or your children and pastor pray and seek God. What is wrong with you? Do you think I was born yesterday? But we buy that bull. And wake me up at 12 o'clock at the house. I said, would you go see my son in a jail? Uh, I'm in a hospital. I'm, uh, <laughs> and then when you come here, I don't care. I ain't going to obey you. How is this dinner coming up tonight? I tell in a pastor's meeting, I tell one thing. Huh? Don't think for a second. People sitting here are ignorant. They have the same Holy Ghost. You should be, by the time we get through, you should be able to spot a $3 bill anytime you see one. But those who work, 
the phonies, they never check phony bills. They always study the real 10 and 20 and a 50 and a hundred dollars. Because as soon as they see something, uh, they already know because they have a point. They go by and you ain't get nothing. Any fool can come and tell you anything. Lord is going to give you a new house and you in Kamache. Of course you're going to shout. Don't write to me any later if you live in Kamacha. That's fine. <laughs> I am saying it. You know why? Because I lived at a sandy park in, 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 in a sand spring. Don't tell me I was not. Come on, man. But I knew one thing. Prophet unto the nation. Prophet over the kingdom. And if you fear God, no good thing will be told from those who fear God. Young lions will lack and suffer hunger, but those who wait on God, they will never hunger. Why are you afraid who gets in office? Is you a child of God? Is he your shepherd or not? He will lead you and guide you and put you. Democrat going to feed you. Republican ain't going to feed you. God feeds you. Everything has to come from the hand of God. If it doesn't come from the hand of God, I don't want it. Who are you going to trust in 2016? Time to go? Lord Jehovah. Do you know their lifestyle who are speaking to you? Can you go ask his wife? What kind of fool is he at the house? Ask the kids. Ask the grandkids. If they don't say he's a man of God, you ain't. I resign today if my wife say I'm a phony. If my granddaughter, my children say I'm a phony, it ain't going to happen. Because I take care of my business. I love my wife. I take care of her. I tell God, for 30 years she worked hard to take care of profit. It's about time for my ship to come so I can take care of your daughter. What's wrong? I hear my soul. Let one of my kids have any need. I'm going to get it. They don't ask for your ten. You understand? Those days are BC gone. <laughs> and I give them, and you know, I tell them, I'm not loaning you. I'm not loaning you. I'm giving you. I am your father. I should be the one removing your stress. I should not be putting burden on you. I'm God's child. Anointed. Burden removing your destroying husband. Burden removing your destroying father. Burden removing your destroying grandfather. Burden removing your destroying pastor. Now go smoke that in your pipe. Couple of my children were, they had some issue yesterday in a call. Huh? I text them, tell me. And they text me back, thank you for caring. If I don't care, I got no business. Huh? What I preach on Sunday hour or Monday or Wednesday, it is 1% of who I am. Huh? My job starts when I leave the pulpit. Ask my wife, three o'clock. One, one guy works nights. At 410, good morning, pastor. 
Well, you work night, I don't. Understand, guess this and Bible say those who labor in love for you know those who work for you, but we treat them like a dog and treat a dog like a king. Who speaks in your life? Do you know their life without the microphone? What are they talking when they are not prophesying? If he was down, can you see him in a foxhole with you? When your son is in trouble, can he bail him out? You don't know how many sons I have bailed him out. From the principal's office, from the coach's office, from the jail, from the drug lords. I have paid so my sons can go free. And some of my daughters don't think it is the guy is only smoker and <laughs> come and talk to me what God says. Let me judge it. If it is God, we both rejoice. If not, I will protect you from making a shipwreck. Or getting bankrupt, having marriage broke. Uh -uh. Mature people. And listen to this. Those who know God, know the voice of God, and here is the bottom line. And those who know you. That woman didn't know you. That man didn't know you. But you know what? I knows you like a book. Lie to me. And I, say, mm -hmm. I know you like a book. I study people. I watch them. When you lie, you become raw cramped, stuttering. who knows the voice of God, who knows God, and he knows you. And he is the bottom line. They want the best for you. They want to protect you. They want to provide for you. They want you to succeed. They want you to run higher than they were run or done what they were. Not jealous of their sons and daughters. My God, you better run faster than I do. You better do better than I do. You know why? I'm going to give you all I'm going to go to heaven empty. I ain't taking nothing with me. I know you can take money with me, but I ain't going to take no anointing with me. You don't need no anointing in heaven. Anointing is for here. Anointing is not for you, so you can feel better. I'm better than everybody. Anointing is for someone else. You set them free. Thank you.